Thanks for watching exclusive with Takhrid Hussain here on Al TV International. And uh, a top headline, of course, is always talking about food security and Egypt's vision 2030. Developing agriculture is one of the key words of the new republic to which President Abdel Fattah Sisi had attached great importance. Food security is uh, a, a very important, if we're talking, the heart of Egypt's vision 2030, a national security issue that is mainly targeting to achieve sustainability, sustainable development uh, in the area of food security. In line with Egypt's vision uh, 2030, the country signed long-term partnership agreements with various countries in the world, encompassing the, those pillars of mutual support and working on innovation and innovative strategies to help expand and uh, to further improve uh, the sustainability and impactful practices in the field of food and uh, agricultural sectors. Aiming to achieve food security to strengthen also the Egyptian economy in the face of the repercussions of COVID-19 and Russia-Ukraine war, Egypt spared no effort to strengthen sustainable food security to expand climate action and to enhance agricultural resilience and uh, production. Well, uh, tonight, ladies and gentlemen, we have all the honor to host His Excellency Yerlan Baidaulet, the uh, Director General of the Islamic Organization for Food Security, knowing more about uh, the organization's strategic framework, the mission, the vision uh, to secure food and agricultural uh, policies in order to reduce food crisis at the member states. His Excellency, uh, as we had all the honor of meeting him before uh, on Nile TV International, it has been like one whole year, one whole year full of passion, full of successes, uh, achievement and hard work. Uh, we know how uh, His Excellency is focused having a passion driven and also professional committed to economic development in his native country, uh, Kazakhstan and also in other countries. His Excellency has a great uh, professional record and is working hard for the development of Islamic finance and economy in his region. Your Excellency, thank you so much for coming again to Nile TV. Thank We're you. really happy to see you once again in Egypt. Thank you. Thank you so much. Well, established in December uh, 2013, the uh, organization, the IOFS, is the only institution in the northern part of the world that unites 57 member countries of the Organization of Islamic uh, Cooperation. Different activities and initiatives are undertaken in order uh, to promote, monitor and manage food security in the member states. Well, we had lots of challenges, Excellency, namely COVID-19, uh, the Russian-Ukrainian war. However, uh, I know that work at the organization has been day and night. Yeah, absolutely true. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I'm very proud and I'm very honored to come again, uh, Madam, to your studio. Thank you. Uh, after, as you already mentioned, about uh, one year. And uh, this year is really marked by a lot of, as you mentioned, passion, dynamism, and a lot of important activities towards the sustainable uh, food security in uh, our member countries. Uh, if I would uh, just shortly mention about what we uh, to have done during this year, it is really will take a lot of time. But uh, our main intention is by our activities as a specialized institution of Islamic Ummah is to precisely identify areas of uh, interest, mutual interest with our member countries. This is probably one of the main focus for us. Uh, in this year, which is actually everybody knows the year when after two years of COVID we started to uh, meet each other, to uh, physically discuss and uh, go to ground uh, on our programs and, uh, and especially going to our member countries. Uh, we faced a lot of uh, actually issues. It's uh, difficult to express all of them, but what I want to say, uh, everybody talk about food security. And this is not just a fashionable uh, talk about it, because what we're facing really, this is a situation, more than 60% uh, situation worsened in this uh, almost one year. 
And uh, I can even uh, mention some figures from 135 million in 2019 up to 345 million. The number of people in hunger and malnutrition increased. Could you imagine how many people now is that uh, situation? And unfortunately, most of those countries are located in, in uh, uh, OIC geography. And uh, we as an institution were very much focused on uh, activities which uh, really priority-wise and strategy-wise are uh, uh, implementing important programs uh, which uh, really uh, uh, of life of our countries. And uh, uh, let me mention some of our programs, uh, and especially let me also say that what I mentioned, I remember one year ago, uh, we are blessed by our uh, all 57 member countries which have anonymously approved our strategy, 10-year strategy. So this 2022 is the first year when we are very actively implementing all our programs and projects. Uh, I can mention that uh, starting the year we visited uh, a number of uh, our regions. I can say that in GCC we were in Qatar and we were in Dubai. We, uh, we arranged some uh, important events there. We also were in Africa. We uh, um, visited uh, Sahel countries. Uh, you know that in, a uh, in the list of the uh, World Bank uh, hunger hotspot, 11 countries, uh, uh, most of them are uh, unfortunately in Africa. And uh, uh, our, uh, our General Assembly, the fourth General Assembly, as of uh, September 2021, has approved our, our uh, program called Global Program, Year of Africa. And uh, we started these activities uh, with all the passion, with uh, targeting uh, needs of our countries. And uh, for young institutions, which we are, uh, it's not easy to cover everything. It is impossible. It mm -hmm. is absolutely impossible. What we do, we're trying to identify some areas which uh, it's like uh, low-hanging fruits, which uh, we uh, straight go to, to our economies, to our people, and trying to uh, do something uh, upon our, let's say, limited resources which we have at the moment. For sure, uh, we will have more. And uh, in this regard, we will hope on our, uh, first of all, on our member countries and on partnership. This is uh, two shoulders which, uh, let's say, we uh, rely on. And uh, we are also, as I meant, already mentioned, for Africa, we were in some of them, we were in Chad, we were in Niger, where we have organized uh, uh, <coughs> ground-based uh, uh, training for rural farmers uh, on uh, water uh, irrigation methods. We also discuss with uh, agro-statisticians uh, how we can facilitate uh, flows, information flows uh, uh, related to agriculture. And also we <coughs> have arranged uh, some other events uh, in June, July, August. So every month is marked by a number of important activities. Uh, I'm sure uh, that those activities uh, bring a real outcome. It's not just uh, like uh, we probably noted before the COVID, uh, mm -hmm. a lot of institutions were arranging something for, for, just, for, for, just for paper. What we do, we are proudly uh, saying that all of these activities are bringing value added for our countries. And uh, for example, we also organize, organize in Tunisia in June uh, 10 days uh, training for our uh, genetic resources specialists from our Francophone African countries. And uh, they were so happy uh, because uh, such an opportunity is not given uh, to, uh, in, in some cases and they have to look for this kind of uh, 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 training opportunities uh, and, uh, and wait. But we have done it in proper time and we continue to work with them. Uh, and uh, I also would like to say some uh, strategic points uh, with, uh, which uh, actually related to, to, to our strategy. We are institution, probably the only international organization 
which is a specialized on food security, which is dealing with the white modality, we call it from gene to fork. Mm -hmm. So our intention to provide um, the whole food supply chain starting from the seeds, start, starting, starting from genetic materials. And uh, in this regard, we, of course, it is not easy for us, but we know and are absolutely confident that in what we are doing. Uh, uh, and we're getting more and more uh, support from uh, our countries. Uh, I also would like to mention that all our five pillars, which I let me also again to mention them, yeah. because those uh, pillars are based on our statutory goals. Uh, we are uh, active on those pillars. One is uh, for governance enablement. Mm -hmm. We are working G2G. We are working government to government. Uh, exactly these days we are arranging a big event in Cairo for our member countries. Most of them are from Africa on food policies, mm -hmm. on uh, food security governance on uh, regulatory measures uh, and we found that uh, throughout uh, COVID period that most of our countries really uh, faced uh, big problems yes, to manage. Many challenges. Yeah, mm -hmm. many challenges in this mm -hmm. situation. And uh, what we do, we're trying to facilitate intra-OIC uh, information exchange and, uh, and especially we call it, we call it also um, <coughs> um, uh, this uh, k kind of South-South cooperation where uh, successful experience could be well shared with others. Mm -hmm. And uh, we are also, let me also emphasize uh, a big support and uh, trust which uh, provided to us by our esteemed government, uh, governments. And here, uh, I, again, I'm uh, also meeting our uh, esteemed uh, officials of uh, Arab, Arab Republic of Egypt. I met the Minister of Agriculture, also today met Minister of uh, Water and Irrigation. And uh, we are really uh, planning not just talk, we, uh, we discussed very serious issues. Yeah. And uh, even those officials, they noted that in one year time uh, from institution and paper, we uh, grown to a tangible and active um, uh, uh, things, which we are yeah. already building, building yeah. on trust, building on partnership. And, uh, great, great hearing, Your Excellency, <coughs> that we have moved from uh, uh, having tangible results now on the ground and implementation. So we're talking action as mm -hmm. we were, spe so to speak. Mm -hmm. And uh, this comes from a sense of dedication on behalf of both of us, of the organization and also Egyptian officials to move forward. As you know that Egypt is putting the issue of food security uh, in the heart of its 2030 vision. Uh, if you would tell us more about uh, the cooperation with the mm. organization, how are we moving forward? What sort of tangible steps uh, mm. that are translated into a story of success on the ground? Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, you know, when we are talking about uh, Egypt, uh, for us it's one of the countries which ha is our founding member. And we really uh, appreciate all the support. We are talking about, we are not talking only about uh, financial contribution mm -hmm. to our budget. We are talking about this commitment which uh, have been expressed and confidence which uh, is being actually uh, or, or, uh, in reality for us. And uh, I would like to, uh, to, if I would say about our cooperation with the Egyptian government, uh, we have very good uh, relations with the Ministry of Agriculture. Yeah. And uh, what we uh, actually discussed, we discussed uh, a number of issues, but uh, after uh, finally we decided to focus, because focus is always uh, a case for success. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, uh, we can lose each, uh, ourselves if we will have uh, mm -hmm. uh, a lot of activities without uh, really um, be uh, coordinated or be uh, focused on any uh, tangible and result-oriented activities. We decided that we, uh, especially for Egypt, it is very important to understand that the country has more than 100 million uh, population. population yeah. And uh, uh, also we noted that uh, the current um, uh, military operation of uh, Russia in Ukraine 
also um, brought a lot of issues. And uh, now uh, countries uh, here in this uh, part of the world, they are uh, also trying to um, change their mind, to change their uh, strategy on more on self-sufficiency side. And uh, also, when we talk about uh, food security issue, issue of strategic uh, community reserves is extremely important. And um, I think what uh, we, uh, we are going to, uh, to activate these days, we would like to, uh, to bring our technical expertise, uh, our knowledge, and uh, also uh, our capacity to uh, working with our partners. We have more than, uh, today we have signed uh, the 50, uh, 50, uh, first uh, memorandum, which actually added uh, by, uh, by action plan. Yeah. We, uh, uh, the figure itself, Your Excellency, yeah. is, uh, is quite remarkable, let me True. say, because if we're talking about uh, the 51st memo, this means that uh, our cooperation is like growing True. and uh, moving uh, faster, as we can see. Um, well, uh, not only wheat, but we have also other strategic goods <coughs> in Egypt, and uh, President Sisi is keen on increasing inventory, <coughs> showroom availability, subsequent mm -hmm. price drop. Uh, we do have uh, the country's efforts that are a lot in managing the food security file. How, how did you see on solid grounds and through the 51 memos of mm. understanding, how does that comply with mm -hmm. the vision of your reputed organization? Thank you. Uh, you know, uh, Madame, I would like to say that uh, we are not uh, pursuing just uh, number and uh, s assigning them um, mm -hmm. you know, of those memorandums. Because memorandum itself is just a framework. Uh, what we are, are really uh, following up, we're following on activities, on action, mm -hmm. which uh, actually we, for our action, we always need a kind of uh, a legal framework. So those uh, more than 50 uh, documents which we have signed, not only with our member country, but also with our partner institution, are uh, extremely important for us because um, uh, to move in such a uh, quickly moving uh, and dynamic uh, environment around us, uh, we have to really focus on, on, on some cases and to find out and to identify right partners and right, right interests from our countries. Uh, with, regard to, uh, with regard to Egypt, uh, what uh, if we are again coming back to the point of activities on ground uh, we discussed with the Minister of Agriculture uh, how we can support small farmers mm -hmm. uh, we know that uh, uh, the centers research centers more than uh, 13 research centers uh, are uh, being developed and um, also today the minister thought about um, Minister of Water, actually, he told about uh, UNESCO Center, which uh, are well equipped uh, and uh, is uh, going to be a center of excellence for uh, water research and and the prax and, uh, same practices in this field. We uh, are looking forward uh, to cooperate with uh, our esteemed uh, government officials here, but at the same time. Uh, we should understand that uh, uh, as a government, uh, is, uh, uh, it's an intergovernmental institution, it's uh, uh, not um, uh, complement actually everything what is uh, important for the poor people. We are looking forward uh, as a group. Our uh, vision is uh, based on our group activities. We have uh, an institution, our subsidiary, which we are developing, it's called International Islamic Food Processing Association. It mm -hmm. started just from idea. Now this uh, institution is uh, covering uh, eight countries, and uh, we uh, just recently mm, and uh, our general assembly, which inshallah going to be on the 10 and 11 October in Tunisia, uh, we are going to mm, adopt uh, important resolution on relocating this institution from the north of, let's say, uh, Muslim Ummah to the heart of the Ummah. Uh, well, I'm talking about Dubai. It is uh, a financially recognized uh, trade and business center uh, where we uh, really expect, um, uh, let's say, accelerated and facilitated 
activities among uh, businessmen of uh, our countries because uh, the main intention uh, of private sector is to uh, my, my, my private sector is the engine yeah. to develop uh, food security. Mm -hmm. Without activities of private sector, we cannot get food on our table. Yeah. This is uh, clear. And uh, this is a part of our activities, as well as uh, to come uh, uh, with a financial solution. Yeah. And we, we also we, discussed today with uh, our uh, esteemed uh, Egyptian uh, government officials. Yes, financial solutions, and uh, there are always <coughs> solutions. Where there is a will, there is always a way. We've seen how we've gone a long way in our sense of cooperation. Uh, that was the first part of our exclusive with His Excellency Yerlan Baidaulet, the Director General of the Islamic uh, Organization for Food Security. And we're really honored to have His Excellency with us on exclusive exclusive and talking together about achievements of a whole year here on Nile TV International. Thank you very much, Your Excellency, Thank you. for joining Thank us. You. Thank you.